Maps are essential to world building. Most world building projects start out with just a map. And there's a good reason for that. Maps help keep your world coherent and sensible. As a creator, it's very good to know where everything in your world is. Naturally, Espa is no different. But a lot of different maps exist. And determining what kind of map of your world you should make first can sometimes be a bit difficult. If you don't map features in the right order, you lose coherency and need to constantly rework stuff. So in order to prevent that, where do we start? This is generally the easiest stage of mapping, but we should start with just the coastlines. The areas of the planet that are underwater versus those that are not. For Espa's map, I generated a lot of maps using map2globe.com to create continental shapes and fizzle them together till I had something that I liked. Based on the general idea I had in mind already and recycled patches from older Espen maps. I then detailed everything and made an 8000 by 4000 pixel equirectangular map of the world. In the past, my prime vision for Espa was one large supercontinent, which over time I split up and added more continents till it wasn't this anymore. Eventually I completely lost the supercontinent, and now Espa has a map of six major continents. Now I know I'm disappointing y'all, but right now I'm not gonna name any of these continents yet. To name a continent, I think you need to have a clear idea of what's happening there, what it looks like, etc. Right now I have no idea what setting can be found over here for example, so I could go and call it Nolom, but that might not fit the atmosphere I want to create there. That said, from previous alliterations of the project, I can give names to these features. From here, the next step is to divide this map up tectonically. Artifaction has a great world building tutorial on how to make such a map, but I'm not a tutorial world builder, so I will summarize the rules really quick in relevance to Espa. You have both oceanic and continental plates which, self-explanatory, can be predominantly ocean or predominantly land. Plates move across the planet slowly, at different speeds and in different directions. Where plates move towards one another, there be mountains. Where they move apart from each other, there can be deep ocean trenches. And where plates slide past one another, there can be earthquakes. This is a bit oversimplified, so once again, go check out Artifaction's video on plate tectonics if you want the full story. It's great. But for now, let's cut up Espa into 22 different plates, including some microplates. Microplates are essentially leftover plates in an area that has previously seen a lot of geologic activity. Now if I add direction to all these plates, we can map our geologic features. So let's draw some arrows on these plates and see where they move. Now we can see what types of boundaries we have. Convergent boundaries are here, here, here and here. If these happen on land, there will be a high mountain range here. If they happen below water, there will be a deep ocean trench and maybe some volcanic islands there. Divergent boundaries are found here, here, here and here. This is where we can expect mid-oceanic ridges and some small islands. Islands can really improve the detail of this map and if placed realistically, also the believability. Also, using the plate directions, I can somewhat roughly reverse engineer the continental drift of Espa a couple hundred million years back. Next thing, let's talk about Espa's hypsometric curvature, a difficult word for a simple graph. The hypsometric curve shows the percentage of surface area versus the altitude. This can tell us a lot about the nature of our terrain. So first, let's determine the lowest point in our world. On Espa, my deepest ocean trench will be 13,227 meters below sea level. This is over three kilometers deeper than the Challenger's Deep and pressure down here will be over 1300 bars. Why is it this deep? Just because that seems cool and there's very little issue having such a deep trench, as long as the average trench depth is only about eight to nine kilometers. Moving up from here, we find the ocean floor. 
The ocean on Espa has an average depth of 3 to 5 kilometers, compared to 3.6 kilometers on Earth. These values are highly approximate and can vary hugely depending on location. Ocean depth doesn't really matter much to me right now though, so this is fine. On ESPA, the land to water ratio differs substantially from the Earth. On Earth, 71% of the surface is covered by ocean, while on ESPA, this is only about 64.1%. So let's set up the average ocean depth slightly less than 3.2 kilometers. As we approach sea level, we climb up the continental shelf. The continental shelf is the area of a continental plate that is part of the continent but has become submerged by water. These are in general undeep coastal areas such as the North Sea. ESPA actually has a lot of these, which directly means sea levels will be high. This is largely because of the limited ice caps on the planet's poles due to the warmer climate. ESPA is intended as a tropical planet and is on average 3 degrees hotter than the Earth. This means relatively large parts of the continent's low-lying coastal regions have flooded or are prone to flooding. Then we pass sea level and reach the continental interior, which are areas above land that lie between 0 and 2 kilometers above sea level. Above 2 kilometers, we enter the mountains. Now ESPA has higher gravity than the Earth, which means in general, mountains will struggle to reach excelling heights. However, here I will once again exploit the general loophole to have a few mountains higher than Mount Everest. Why not? It's my world and I want a 10.5 km tall mountain. Let's place the highest mountain on Espa somewhere on this fault line and make it exactly 10,554 meters tall. At this extreme altitude, air pressure will drop to 0.59 bars, compared to 0.34 bars at the summit of Mount Everest. I could try to go lower, but that would create an, in my opinion, unrealistically tall mountain. So let's recap. ESPA, similar to the Earth, has active plate tectonics and is consequently a geologically active world. However, since the planet is less dense than the Earth, its tectonics generally move more smoothly. The last supercontinent on the planet existed approximately 130 million years ago, and this has since broken up into the current continental arrangement seen on the planet. There also exists numerous active volcanic regions on the planet. As earlier mentioned, the tectonic plates drift faster on ESPA than they do on Earth, due to the planet's density being lower. The average drifting speed of the plates on ESPA is about 9 mm per year, which is significantly higher than that of the Earth. Supervolcanoes also aren't rare, but due to the size of ESPA, they aren't as impactful or harmful to life as they are on Earth, with the same applying to sea and earthquakes. Despite her higher gravity, ESPA's highs and lows vary more than they do on Earth. The highest point on the planet being 10.5 kilometers above sea level in the mountains in western Vantamere. These mountains are the result of a continental oceanic convergent plate boundary pushing up the coastline, in a similar manner to the way the Andean mountains in South America are forming. Roughly 6-10% to of the planet's surface can be classified as mountainous. The next 25% of the surface is covered by a wide variety of continental interiors, such as deserts, rainforests and plains. In total, putting 35.8% of the surface above sea level, meaning the planet has significantly more exposed land than the Earth does. The largest of the Espen continents is Vantamere, which comprises over 27% of the planet's total land area. The remaining 64.2% of the planet is submerged under the planet's wide oceans. The largest of these being the Theic Ocean, directly west of Vantamere. The continental shelf is of similar proportions to the Earth, comprising roughly 15% of the submerged surface. Average ocean depth on ESPA is 3 to 5 kilometers, with the deepest trench plunging 13.2 kilometers below sea level, just south of Ihan. And that covers our map. Or well, geologically at least, because there is a lot more mapping that needs to be done for this to even remotely tell us what the planet is like specifically. But for now, this will be a good start. My next job will be to figure out ESPA's atmospheric currents. But this, I shall do in the next video. I hope this was entertaining to you, and with that, I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.